But I think the, the deeper structure about CEB is that there's no investment. There's no capacity building. That's a deep, uh, uh, that's, that's the issue that, that the government should focus on. Mm. I think that's, that's where the government should come up and do the investment. For an example, the, the solution, ultimate solution for the, the crisis in CE, CEB is taking Adani and uh, buying electricity from India is that the answer. So I think we have more rational, more logical answers that we can actually uh, discover, that we can experiment on. So uh, if you are, if you are basing you money... There is no investment and Adani is investment. Yeah. What do you want when you say CEB needs investment? Well, I think, uh, well, more investments uh, from, the, from the side of the government. So no, what I'm saying is you said more investment to the CEB. Yeah and Adani is an investment, mm -hmm. but you're saying, no, that is not the answer, then what kind of investment do you want? The kind of, uh, for an example, CEB power plants. Okay, right. but what's the investment? From government? From the gov government investment. Exactly. So people's money. Exactly. People's that money. the government doesn't yeah, have. People's money. Uh, well, could I also yeah. have yes, something definitely. in this? We have an energy crisis in Europe. What's happening? Company after company is now wanting to migrate. Why? Because energy costs are soaring. Yeah. Where are they migrating to? East Asia, where they subsidize energy. Yeah. Because this is a war of cost of production. Let's make no mistake, we're in a global economic war. And the, con the winners are the countries that subsidize the core costs of production. So when CEB loses money, companies in Sri Lanka gain, okay? People gain. So we have this very mechanical approach to everything. We say, oh, they're losing money. Actually, a lot of companies in China, in Vietnam, in East Asia, they're all losing money. Mm -hmm. Look at the transport companies. But critical thing is this is a huge subsidy to the cost of production which makes them highly competitive. Look at BASS, B-A-S-F. They said they're migrating from Germany. This is one of the largest German companies to China. Why? Energy costs. And why is it that with all these oil prices rising and energy prices rising, look at the energy prices in East Asia. They didn't rise very much. They rose for us. They rose for the Europeans. They rose for the Americans who produce the energy. But what did the East Asians think? Ah, costs, competitiveness. This is where we get it wrong. We don't understand that when you privatize, you mentioned the SOEs. I'm 100% with you. You know, a lot of them are corrupt and they are to serve the interests of various politicians. But what about the strategic industries? Mm -hmm. This is crucial. Mm. I'll just give you an example. You see this obsession with privatization is now being reversed in Europe, now. As we speak, the Europeans are now mm. rethinking all the privatizations. UK has gone too far. Mm. I'll just give one example. It's a very simple one. The British government privatized the airports. They privatized it and sold it to British Airports Authority, a monopoly. It's a monopoly. It controls seven of the eight largest airports. What did they do? They didn't have to reinvest. They're a monopoly. You see, they sold it to a private monopoly. They said, thank you very much. We'll charge whatever we want to charge. We don't have to reinvest in anything. The Daily Telegraph, which is a conservative newspaper who was very pro the privatization, admitted in a study that the average business traveler loses 45 minutes per journey because of the inefficiency of the airports. We have to rethink what we have done. Mm -hmm. How can you rethink what you have done? It's going to cost the British taxpayer a huge amount of money. Look at British Railway, same problem. You know, you are not thinking properly because there are a lot of short-term profits to be made for a lot of people. But they don't think about what is it going to do to the cost structure of the society. This is the problem. The East Asians, they're much smarter. They understand competition. They understand 
what this fundamental battle is about, and that's how they managed to keep these costs so low. They're the winners now, you can see this. When I was recently teaching in, in Vietnam, <laughs> the managing director of the business school was complaining bitterly to me. He said, every day I have at least two different groups coming from Europe to see me, asking me about the environment in Vietnam for investment, etc., etc. They're running away from Europe. Why are they running away from Europe? Because Europe can't keep energy prices down. Now we are thinking of privatizing our energy, selling it to India. You think they're going to subsidize energy in Sri Lanka? Think again, they're not going to do that. We're going to destroy mm -hmm. the cost base of the country. Why? Because we say, you know, the sacred thing, oh, they'll come and invest and so on. This is a nonsense argument. This is absolutely simpleton argument. These are people who don't understand the very basics of the success of the East Asians. They understand capitalism better than anyone else. They're obsessed with competition. They're obsessed with competition. China does not have one company like Apple dominating the entire smartphone industry. China has five giant smartphone companies, four of which were deliberately set up to fight against Huawei, deliberately because they want competition driving down the costs, improving the technology, etc. But when it comes to strategic industries, then they want those industries to make sure the costs for the whole society are low. This is the, this is the point that is being made. Now, we, my experience is that governments are encouraged not to invest in industries like electricity, like water, etc., so that one day the pressure will be so great for the privatization of these things. But we're not thinking smart, you know? It's just like, I'm sorry I'm a broken record, but it's like we privatized NDB. Mm -hmm. Where is our cheap cost of funds now? You think the Chinese and the Vietnamese and all the other successful countries are going to privatize that goes that laid the golden egg they don't do that they want to make sure that their cost base is as low as they can possibly make it that's why for me it's a very simple thing about privatization never create a private monopoly never mm. and never sell it to foreigners never ever do that because they don't have any responsibility in your country where you can sell bits let's say telecom, let's say the mobile phone sector. Mm. Why not? Why not privatize it? You can make it competitive, there's dialogue, there's all these other, and we want competition because that drives technology change. It reduces costs. But where you can't guarantee competition, you never do that.